articles. Um, I know you're great to see one of them, but um, our theory that we're trying to show here is that the societal um, social constructs that force the women lead to psychological instability, which occasionally leads to killing your husband. Um, Susan Glassley wrote the play Trifles based on the unique story of Minnie Wright, a woman who eventually acted on her feelings she had built up after years of abuse. However, this play is actually based on the real life occurrence of a battered wife carrying out her revenge on her husband. In the year 1900, Mar Margaret Hosick was on trial for murdering her husband with an ax in his sleep. Prior to this event, the mother of nine had spoken out to members of her community about her husband's abuse to her and her children. Only for the accusations of her husband to be quickly dismissed, and quoting from Sue Eckhoff, she was encouraged to reconcile with her husband and keep their troubles private, and John Hosick's behavior was dismissed as tantrum. In an almost identical occurrence, Minnie Wright, and the main character of this play, was on trial for the strangling of her abusive husband in his sleep. In, in 1916, at the time of John Wright's murder, women had not even gained the right to vote. We can all agree that no voting rights indicate we have no important role in society, and you're, eventually, you're essentially left voiceless. Minnie Wright was a victim to living in a man's world. She was married to a husband that worked long hours and left her in the house all day to tend to her duties. Several of the townsfolk within the story claim that John Wright was marginally and a miserable person to be around. Mrs. Hale, a former friend of Minnie's and also a dominant role in this play, notes that prior to her marriage, Minnie was in fact a lively and cheerful individual who even sang in the church choir. Mrs. Hale also reveals that after the marriage, Minnie was almost never seen out of the house and the friendship between the two had faded. At the time of the trial, it's believed that Minnie's only companion in her miserable life was a small canary leaving her with nobody to go to when it came to her husband's terrible ways. Within this uh, lecture, there's going to be three important themes, or um, they're kind of just factors, leading up to the murders of both John Hosick and John Wright. These three themes are imprisonment, isolation, and oppression. We find that the, these themes are expressed through several symbols within the, within the play, and we'll go more in depth on these, but the important symbols to note are the bird, the birdcage, and Mrs. Wright. The small bird represents Mrs. Minnie Wright before her marriage, and the birdcage re represents the marriage itself. And John Wright, although he's not a character in the play due to his death, he's the um, he's the symbol for society strength standards on women in the early 1900s. Oops. <laughs> All right. When we imagine Minnie as a small bird, we find that the birdcage represents her imprisonment within her marriage. A small bird in the story was Minnie's last glimmer of happiness as reminding her of the days prior to her marriage where she too once sang beautifully. For 30 years, Minnie Wright was trapped in a bird cage. She was trapped in a cage that stifled her beauty, leaving her unable to sing and fly. She was trapped in a miserable farmhouse tending to her house slave duties and was a prisoner to her miserable marriage that slowly strangled the happiness out of her. Switching to a more scientific view, isolation and loneliness are directly linked to the development of mental and physical illnesses. It is absolutely essential for a human being's health to develop significant relationships. And an Australian national survey was also found that loneliness impaired cognitive function and leads to cognitive decline. It's also important to note that this loneliness can be felt in a room full of people. Loneliness is defined as the lack of affection and sincerity in a relationship and is not weighed by the amount of human interaction. John Wright was robbing many of the one essential, one of the most essential aspects of human life. He was robbing her of love. John Wright was in the perfect display of societal standards in the early 1900s. He's a prime example of a controlling and oppressive husband. Bringing us to our final theme of oppression. John expected his wife to fulfill her only duties, to become a mother and to tend to the house and be his personal maid. For reasons we don't know, Minnie never became a mother. However, we do know that for 30 years, Minnie dealt with a man who was controlling and abusive. <coughs> he murdered her beloved bird, her last companion and her last glimmer of what was once Minnie Foster and now Minnie Wright. She was suffocating in her, in her marriage, and coincidentally in the play, John Wright strangled in his sleep. Even though it's mentioned that in the play that in fact there was a gun in the Wright's residence. Minnie chose to strangle her husband, just like he strangled the life out of her slowly by entrapping her in what seemed like a never-ending marriage. We discussed um, three themes and their importance because they can be directly linked in a cause and effect relationship. Imprisonment, isolation, and oppression are very present in both the story of Minnie Wright and Margaret Hosick. It's believed that these three imposing factors could cause the women to act out in a burst of emotions and kill their husbands. The performance we see today is our interpretation of this play. We've removed the men as characters and have added a very important character in Minnie Wright herself. 
We believe that this woman suffered abuse, whether verbal or physical, for quite some time, and she was led to her breaking point when her insufferable husband murdered her beloved bird. As a result, it seems appropriate that she finally had her voice, and the men of this play were removed due to their inability to see the truth. Two things to note in both the Margaret Hosey case and Minnie's case is that in the search is the search for evidence and a motive. In the play, the men are searching the house and the land for the evidence of what happened. However, for many of us, the answer is evident and the motive was clear. Looking more specifically at the Hosick case, the court struggled desperately to search for motive and evidence, even when it was publicly known that her husband was abusive. The women in the play, Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Pugh, are important too because they see the truth, although they choose to deny it. They acknowledge Minnie's change in character, they find the broken bird cage, and they find the dead bird. The truth is there, but they can't come to terms with it. Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters cannot come to terms with the horrors that happened in the farmhouse, but for different reasons. These women are also subject to the irrational expectations of women that society had placed on them. It's likely that Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters suffered the way Minnie did, but they cannot imagine the act of acting out against their husbands because of the effect society has on them. In the words of Maria Fink in the, in the 1900s, it was a sin for women to rebel or express their feelings. Women who did criminal things to defend herself from, um, defend herself from something oppressing her was seen as uh, unacceptable and extraordinary. Women like Minnie Wright and Margaret Hosick suffered from mental instability brought on by years of abuse and oppression. Imprisonment and isolation alone could bring on sleep deprivation and extreme depression. So these women just laid there all night as their husbands slept soundly and thus while they just suffered. Is, is it true that the women in the random act of emotion just finally exploded? And in both of the stories, it seems to suggest that it could be so. Statistics prove that crimes of these natures are often caused by victim precipitated actions and traumatic experiences occurrences, such as the victim killing their bird. And in most of these cases, there's almost always, a, almost always a history of abuse. It seems that the search for an alternative motive within these trials can be summed up in one final quote by Linda Benzie. Mm -hmm. Women who will kill evoke a fear because they challenge societal, con societal constructs of femininity, passivity, restraint, and nurture, thus to rush to isolate and label the female offender. To cauterize the act, her behavior must be aberrant or crazed if it is to be explicable. Inexplicable it must be, her crime cannot be seen as societally driven if the cultural stereotypes are to remain unchallenged.